Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. What are you saying, people? Today I'm going to teach you how to go from having a monotone of voice, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, Arrahman Rahim, Malik Yomdeen, to be Ibnillah Ta'ala sounding like a proper reciter. So, this is how to beautify your voice with Quran. Before we get started, you need to make sure that your intentions are correct. You need to make sure that you want to beautify your voice for the right reasons. You're not doing it for the people. You're not doing it for X, Y, Z. You are doing it for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jal because Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala says, وَرَتِّلِ الْقُرْآنَ تَرْتِيلًا and recite the Quran in a measured recitation. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi says, لَيْسَ مِنَّا مَنْ لَمْ يَتَغَنَّا بِالْقُرْآنَ So once you have your intentions in check, we could proceed. I'm going to preface this by saying when I was growing up, I went to Muslim national school, primary school. We didn't have Muslim teachers, unfortunately, because we are in Ireland and there is a lack of that. Everyone wants their sons and daughters to become engineers, accountants, yada, 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 but not teachers. Anyways, that's a different topic. So we have a lot of non-Muslim teachers and every fortnight we have an assembly and in the assembly, you recite a hadith, you recite a bit of Quran, you do a play, but every single assembly has to have Quran at the beginning. And without fail, wallahi, I have seen non-Muslim teachers, the non-Muslim teachers crying, tears falling down their cheeks when they listen to the Quran. Why? Because Quran is powerful. It has a penetrating effect on the soul. It is what the soul needs and they don't even understand it. So imagine the non-Muslims who understood it, the mushrikeen at the time of the Prophet It was so powerful that they used to say, لا تسمعوا لي هذا القرآن والغوفي Speak over it, don't listen to this Quran Distract yourself And it was said that the mushrikeen would also sneak out at night While the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is making Qiyam al-Layl And they would just listen to the Quran from outside the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's house And it was said in the fifth year of revelation The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam went to the Kaaba And Abu Jahl was there And Utba And Shayba And all the big mushrikeen, big heads And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam began to pray And he recites Surah Al-Najm beautiful 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 voice as you can imagine if a kid's voice or a sighted's voice is touching you who is imitating the person who's imitating the person who's imitating all the way back to the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam who took it from jibreel who took it from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can you imagine how beautiful his voice is and the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam recites when sahibukum wa ma ghawa وَمَا يَنطِقُ عَنِ الْهَوَىٰ And he keeps reciting and they're listening. And Abu Jahl, by the way, he's told the Prophet ﷺ, if he sees him in front of the Kaaba praying that he will himself stomp on his neck. He didn't do anything. He's listening. The Qur'an has captivated him. And the Prophet ﷺ keeps reciting and he gets to the part, أَفَرَأَيْتُمُ اللَّاتَ وَالْعُزَّةَ وَمَنَاتَ الثَّالِثَةَ الْأُخْرَىٰ أَلَكُمُ الذَّكَرُ وَلَوْ الْأُنْثَىٰ تِلْكَ إِذَا قِسْمَةٌ ضِيزَ He's challenging them and he's speaking to them, communicating with them through the Quran. They used to say that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, his daughters were the idols and the angels. And for them, they had the men. And Allah has the female. Because when they would get a daughter, and the Prophet ﷺ keeps reciting, tells them about repentance. Then he gets the verses of how they were created then gets to the verses of how Allah destroyed the people before them. And they've known about these stories. These stories have been passed through generation to generation. And the Prophet ﷺ tells them about Ad. They were southeast from where they were at. And Thamud. They were in the north. And they've also heard about Qom Nuh. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam keeps reciting, keeps reciting. And they are in fear. And their hearts are trembling. The Quran has fully grasped their hearts and minds at this point. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam now tells them, And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam gets to the sajda and he makes wujud. فَاسْجُدُوا لِلَّهِ وَعْبُدُوا And they all follow. Mad. Look how the Qur'an has affected them. The Prophet ﷺ made sujood. They all made sujood. It penetrated their hearts because they understood it. But this recitation is also a gift from Allah Azza wa Jal. Uh, the Prophet ﷺ was passing by Abu Musa al-Ash'ari. 
and he tells him لقد أوتيت مزمارا من مزامير آل داود you have been given a flute from the flutes of the family of داود <coughs> or داود because داود had a beautiful voice and it was known يا جبال أو بمعه والطير وألنا له الحديد he would recite so beautifully that the mountains would interact and the birds would interact with but that doesn't mean that we can not beautify our voices sorry I went on a mad tangent but the main main way first of all is مخارج الحروف to pronounce every letter properly my mother is a teacher in a Muslim national school she teaches Quran Arabic and religious studies but she also teaches Quran school online after that and I see the amount of people that want quick results they want it now they want it quick they want to sound like XYZ certain reciters that they love but they're not willing to do the groundwork which is I have it here in front of me القاعدة النورانية for example and that is perfect for مخارج الحروف القاعدة النورانية you begin with the alphabet Alif, Ba, Ta, Tha, Jim. Okay, all the way to, you know, full sentences and full letters. Um, so you have to put in the work. You do the makhalij, do the qaida nawraniya, and then you study tajweed and you study the rules where you should make the mudud, where you should make the qalqala, where you should make the idhar, where you should make the ikhfa, where you should make the idgham. And once you know these rules, and you know your makharij, your voice will transform straight away. And you're going to go from monotonal voice to actually having a nice voice. You're going to go from Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen to Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. See the big difference. And I'm not, I'm not even putting a nice voice here. I'm not trying. That was just pure makharij and tajweed. When it was time to pronounce every single word from its makharij, I done it. And it just sounded nicer. That is one on how to beautify your voice. It's also having a bit of breath. And that's also a malika from Allah Azza wa It's a gift. Some people have the ability to hold their breath for longer. Some people don't, but you can definitely train it. I definitely trained it through swimming when I was younger. Getting to the pool and I would just exhale, 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 exhale as much as possible. And then I'd hold my breath and just time it. So once you do that and you perfect it, now it's time to know what your tone is. And take a reciter that sounds very similar to you. Before Muslim National School, we went to Quran school. We went to Quran school from 7 to 9. So we'd go pray Fajr, then start at Quran school. On the way to Quran school, I don't know if my mom done this on purpose or not, but we'd have Sa'd al-Ghamidi playing on the cassette. And he would recite Surah Fatr. Because of this repetition, and because I have a similar tone to Sheikh Sa'd al-Ghamidi, I just found myself imitating him without even meaning to do it. الحمد لله فاطر السماوات والأرض جاعل الملائكة رسلا أولي أجنحة مثنى وثلاث ورباع يزيد في الخلق ما يشاء إن الله على كل شيء قدير and the only reason I was able to do it is because I actually wasn't trying to imitate him. I just listened and listened and listened and listened and listened. And I've, that's just been on repeat for the whole year. And then when I started, it just came out. So obviously when you're younger, you're more impressionable and it's easier for you to pick up these things. But when you're older, don't try to imitate straight away. Take like two lines and listen to them on repeat 30, 40, 50 times. Don't say a word. Just listen and see where every single letter is coming out. Once you're able to follow at least one or two words, then you move on. But you need to be patient. And the tone of the qari needs to be similar to yours. So if you have a deeper tone, maybe al-husari or minshawi, and they would also make your tajweed absolutely goated because they are the top in tajweed. If you have a higher pitch voice, this is someone with a similar voice. To wrap this up, makharij, tajweed, listening to a reciter that has a similar tonality to yours, training your breath, understanding the Quran, because when you understand the Quran and you know what you're reading, it will touch you on a different level. When it comes to the verses of punishment and adab, it saddens you. When it comes to the verses of Jannah, it makes you happy and you're elated. When it comes to the verses where you need to, out of respect to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, lower your tone, you lower your tone. For example, when they say that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has a son. وَعِيَذُ بِاللَّهِ وَقَالُوا اتَّخَذَ الرَّحْمَانُ وَلَدَ Have you ever heard the reciters? They bring down the tone all the way of respect for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is what the Salaf done. لَقَدْ جِئْتُمْ شَيْئًا إِدَّا 
تكاد السماوات يتفطرن منه وتنشق الأرض وتخر الجبال هدا أن دعوا للرحمن ولدا So bring in your tone when you need to bring it down. Increasing your tone when you need to increase it. And that can only be done with understanding and knowing what you're reciting. So having proper makharaj, having tajweed, being patient with these first two because they are the foundations and they are the fundamentals. Your breath. Following a shaykh that has a similar tonality, understanding the Quran. Subhanakallah wa bihamdika ashadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa tubi ilayk. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.